Sean Combs has given the world big name artists like Mariah Carey, created the Sean John clothing line, and published his own platinum albums starting with No Way Out in 1997. But today, it seems like Pete Diddy hung the microphone on a nail. Welcome to Major Key Unlimited. Who is Sean Combs? What is happening with Bad Boy Records and its owner now? Despite still being one of the wealthiest rappers in the world, what does P. Diddy do? Make sure to watch till the end to find out. Sean John Combs came to earth on November 4th, 1969 in Harlem, New York. Raised by his single mother after his father was murdered in 1974, Holmes grew up in Mount Vernon, New York, and went to a Catholic boys' school in the Bronx. He was dubbed Puffy in high school due to his habit of puffing out his chest to make his body appear bigger. Holmes attended business administration at Howard University, holding weekly dance parties and operating an airport shuttle service while visiting classes. He dropped out to continue an internship at Uptown Records, which led to a talent director job. Combs rapidly rose to the vice president level and successfully produced several key artists for Uptown, but dropped the company in the early 1990s. In 1993, Combs originated his own production company, Bad Boy Entertainment. He worked with upcoming and established rap, hip hop, and R&B recording artists, such as Mariah Carey, New Edition, Method Man, Babyface, Lil' Kim, TLC, Boys to Men, SWV, Aretha Franklin, Faith Evans, Mary J. Blige, and Biggie Smalls. By 1997, Bad Boy Entertainment had sold almost $100 million in recordings and made a multi-million dollar deal with Arista Records to manage the label. After his friend and artist Biggie Smalls was shot in 1997, Combs recorded the tribute, I'll Be Missing You, which skyrocketed the Billboard singles chart for 11 weeks and published Combs' first album, No Way Out, to platinum status. Nielsen Soundscan declared No Way Out the third best-selling LP of 1997, having more than 3.4 million copies sold in the U.S. Both the single, I'll Be Missing You, plus the album No Way Out won Grammys the next year, for best rap performance by a duo or group and best rap album, respectively. In December 1999, Combs and his now ex-girlfriend, actress, and singer Jennifer Lopez were allegedly involved in a New York City nightclub shooting where three people were injured. Combs got charged with four counts of illegal gun possession and one count of bribery. Prosecutors declared that he offered his driver, Wardell Fenderson, $50,000 to say that the loaded gun police had found at the crime scene was Fenderson's. His trial began in late January 2001. On March 16, 2001, all charges were dropped against Comb and his bodyguard, Anthony Wolf Jones. Combs' protege, the promising young rapper Jamal Shine Barrow, accused of firing wildly inside the nightclub and injuring the three bystanders, was found guilty of assault, reckless endangerment, and criminal possession of a weapon, but the more severe charge of attempted murder was dropped. In 2002, Combs published We Invented the Remix after Bad Boy's 10th anniversary, The Hits, in 2004. Combs was also featured on the Bad Boys 2 soundtrack along with rappers Nelly and Murphy Lee in 2004 with the hit Shake Your Tail Feather, which got the trio a Grammy for Best Rap Performance by a Duo or Group. A consummate entrepreneur, Combs joined reality television as an executive producer debuting in 2002 with MTV's Making the Band which most famously originated the all-girl group, Danity Kane. In August 2008, Combs progressed working in the niche with the premiere of his VH1 series, I Want to Work for Diddy, and immediately after, P. Diddy's Star Maker on MTV. In 2007, 
Holmes signed a deal with the vodka brand Ciroc to help with its development and, a year later, bought the hip-hop clothing line Inichi from Liz Claiborne for $20 million. In 2013, Combs started his own music-oriented cable network called Revolt. In December 2017, when the owner of the NFL's Carolina Panthers declared he wants to sell the team, Diddy tweeted that he was throwing his hat into the ring as a buyer, stating, there are no majority African-American NFL owners. Let's make history. He was partnered by other prominent athletes interested in an ownership stake, including basketball star Stephen Curry and quarterback-turned-activist Colin Kaepernick. A highly exposed personal life always followed Diddy's popularity. He is known for romancing many women. In 1993, he got his first son Justin with high school love designer Misa Hilton Brim. He also fathers another son, Christian, twin daughters Delilah Starr and Jesse James with then-girlfriend Kim Porter. Also in 2006, he got a daughter, Chance, with Sarah Chapman. Back then in the 90s, Bad Boy Records had controlled the charts with countless hits, which is just one way Diddy has become one of the wealthiest music moguls in Hollywood. Despite all the label's success, things had taken a shift with many of its artists protesting about seeing no royalties from their music sales. That, along with creative differences with Diddy, would slowly but surely see Bad Boy Records experience a speedy downfall. Diddy's record label indeed changed the face of hip-hop after signing the notorious B.I.G., who was the best-selling artist on the label with sales reaching 28 million albums in the U.S. alone. Diddy also saw mainstream success with Craig Mack and Faith Evans who dropped three albums under Bad Boy before leaving and signing with Capitol to release her fourth album, The First Lady, in 2005. Just three years after originating the company, Diddy had earned an incredible $75 million in album sales, so there was surely a lot of money being made behind the scenes. Yet. Many artists signed to the label would later complain about not getting paid for their work. At one time, a dozen of its artists were ready to leave the company, even if it indicated they would never see the same kind of success they had in their prime. In an Instagram post in January of 2020, former bad boy recording artist Mace, who was also one of Diddy's best friends, went off on his former boss for supposedly still owing him his publishing royalties. From 24 years ago, seeing only $20,000 for the release at that time. Former 112 singer Q Parker shared similar words after Mace's Instagram post went viral, stating he had suffered severe consequences from an improper contract signed at Bad Boy. Mace's debut album Harlem World sold more than 4 million copies in the U.S. and placed number one on the Billboard Hot 200. His next one, Double Up, wasn't as successful, peaking at number 11. However, it still earned him RIA certification for sales of 2 million copies sold, which were still solid numbers nonetheless. After the third album, Welcome Back, underperformed to the label's expectations, it would be the last record of the rapper before choosing to drop the music game and coming to faith. There was even more controversy surrounding Bad Boy when its former artist, Loon, was arrested during a visit to Brussels in 2011 for a drug traffic conspiracy. Despite its worldwide success, Bad Boy was also famous for his long list of one-hit wonders like Cassie, Dirty Money, Young Jock, Asim, and Red Cafe, all of who have since gotten out of their contracts and went into other career paths aside from music. Diddy also negatively hit the news this year after rapper Robert Black Rob Ross's death. While some saw him struggling to breathe from the hospital bed severely disheartening, the rest couldn't help but wonder for what reason the rapper spent his ultimate days homeless despite achieving fame in the realm of music. Yo, hold up. Oh, man. I mean, I've been dealing with this man for five years. 
Damn. Four strokes. Damn, I don't know what to tell you, man. This shit is crazy. This shit is hard, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't got no house to live in. Except probably, man, a, a apartment, man, for me and my, me and my man be trying to get together, man. I'm telling you, man, this shit is strange. It's, it's hard, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know what the people are going to do, but the people are going to say. But my tell my, my, man, I, I need some, I need some rest, man. Really, man, I need some rest, man. My, 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 my side is killing me. Before Black Rob passed during his last days, fellow rapper Mike Zombie and actor Mark Curry originated a campaign on GoFundMe to raise funds to help Black find a home, pay for medical help, and stability during these hard times. They raised over $30,000 as fans are still making donations even after his death. On April 18th, Combs took to Instagram to pay tribute to the foreign friend and rapper And it indeed hasn't sat well with Black Rob's fans who slammed the ex-boss for allegedly not helping the rapper in a tricky situation. Today, Bad Boy holds less than 10 artists under its roster, including French Montana, Machine Gun Kelly, Janelle Monae, and Bow Wow. It's fair to say that Diddy's company has completely fallen from its position as one of the most influential record labels in Hollywood. As for its owner, P. Diddy was once the wealthiest rapper globally until others began having success with their entrepreneurial endeavors, and not just music. In 2021, P. Diddy's net worth is $900 million. Looks like Sean Combs simply has no time or passion for hitting back at the music career. But what do you think? Should P. Diddy pay more attention to his label? Or is he doing well enough so far? Share your opinion in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss an upload and you can enjoy the excellent content that we send your way. My name is Dollar Black. Follow me on Instagram at the real Dollar Black. T H E R E A L D O L L A B L A C K. Look forward to hearing from you.